everybody. Welcome to the third episode of the Smarty Plants podcast. My name is Judy Bushala. I've created this podcast along with my brother, Phil, to spread the word to as many people as we can about the powerful impact that a whole food plant-based diet has on our health, our planet, and all the living and breathing creatures that live here with us. Today, we're talking about the standard American diet, which basically means what most Americans typically eat every day. I think this is really going to shock you. I learned about this back when I took my plant-based nutrition course four or five years ago, and I finally put it all together in my brain how the food that most of the country is eating goes hand in hand with the rise of obesity and chronic disease, which are now at epidemic levels in the U.S., I don't think I fully saw that entire picture until I learned about it in class and was presented with all the facts and the stats and the data. And then it really, really sunk in. Our food is literally killing us. And Phil and I think it's really important for you to fully understand what we are eating, why we are eating this way. It's pretty shocking, but we can do something about this. That's the good news. Doesn't have to be this way. We have the power to take control and do something about it. This episode is packed with really great info that will really make you think about what you're putting into your body. So thanks for listening and let's get into it. Today, we are talking about the standard American diet. Some people refer to this diet as the sad diet. Do you know why, Phil? <laughs> I would hope so. You know, I would see that everywhere and people referred to it. And I did have to look it up a while back because even after I started this, I would see that. And I'm like, what's a sad diet? Like it didn't make any sense till I looked it up. So I, so I did. And then it, of course it made a lot of sense. I love how that works out like that. The sad <laughs> diet is the standard American diet. So this just means what Americans typically eat every day. So they did a bunch of surveys and they figured out what we're all eating and what we want to talk about today is what we're eating, but why is this important to talk about? Well, we think it's important to talk about this so we get a full understanding of what is going on right now, because chronic disease, meaning obesity, heart disease, and diabetes are at epidemic levels in the U.S. right now. It is shocking to me. So even though we all kind of know it, what's going on with the food, Phil and I think it's important that you know we we explain it. So here's some some stats. Seventy percent of us who are over twenty years old are overweight or obese. Seventy percent of us. I'm talking about Americans here. Maybe, maybe I should have read that. It says us. <laughs> oh, stop it. That means only thirty percent of us are at a healthy weight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's true and. Here's, here's um, the thing with obesity is people gain more and more weight, the risk of diabetes goes up too. So the more obese people there are, the more diabetic people there will be. That's just how it works. So what does being obese mean? Being overweight or obese both mean having more body fat than what is considered to be healthy. So people who are obese have a much higher amount of body fat than people who are overweight. So your BMI or your body mass index compares weight to height. That's all it does. So a BMI of 30 or more is considered obese. What did you always think of as obese? Extreme weight issues, not just people that have a, a belly or a slightly overweight or anything like that. It's kind of super heavy people. That to me, I think is morbidly obese. Right. That's, that's kind of the picture I get in my yeah. head. Being obese, a BMI of 30 or above that's a lot of people. Like I just said, 70% of us are either overweight or obese. So overweight, I think it's like your BMI is 25 to 30, something like that. So like I said, as people gain more and more weight, the risk of these chronic diseases goes up. So that means heart disease and diabetes are at epidemic levels because the obesity is going up. So they say that by 2030, 50% of us will be obese. 50%, that's crazy. Yeah, and just some more facts, 19.3% of children in the US ages two to 19 are obese, 19%. And this is really shocking. Mm. What used to be considered adult conditions like high blood pressure and cholesterol, high cholesterol, it's now showing up in kids. It is, yeah. I mean, it's, and, and you know, that's what they say, the kids, 
pattern the parents. And it's like, we have to be conscious of what we're doing because we're, we're creating a society that's getting heavier and heavier and heavier. And that brings along health problems that never have to happen. And I mean, typically, I mean, as a kid, you're, you're put into that situation. Adults have choices. Kids, you're eating what's putting in front of you. And of course, you want all the good stuff. You want the treats and the fried food and you know everything like that. You're a kid, of course. But uh, that's how it's kind of moving forward is, you know, the kind of the bad habits of adult kind of putting it into the kids. Exactly. That's how you learn. That's what you learn to do. So more than 30 million Americans have diabetes. And we're talking about type two. Type one is an, a different story. So there's two types and we're going to get into diabetes in another episode. I don't want to get too far into it, but we're talking about type two diabetes, which is considered a lifestyle disease, which means it's not something you were born with, or, you know, this is lifestyle choices create it. So an estimated 84 million Americans have pre-diabetes. That's one in three adults. That means you're headed right down the road to having full on diabetes. It's coming up one in three adults. So that's why we're here. We really want to get this message out because this, there's no need for this. There's no need for heart disease. Speaking of heart disease, heart disease is the leading cause of death worldwide. Heart disease is not only completely preventable, but reversible as well. Reversible. I, we, we mentioned this in the first episode. It, I was so shocked when I heard this because our family loaded with heart disease. Now I know there's anomalies, people are born with heart problems. You know, there's a lot of things. I'm not saying every, every case is cured by eating a plant-based lifestyle. There are exceptions, but for the most part, it's preventable and reversible. Yeah. Every 52 seconds, somebody in the U S dies of, a, of heart disease, 735,000 Americans approximately suffer heart attacks each year. One out of every three people in the U S will die from cardiovascular disease. So what's going on? Who can guess? <laughs> Let's say it together. It's, it's the, the food. food. <laughs> it's the food. And what is the food? What is the SAD, S-A-D, SAD, standard American diet that most of us are eating? Well, it's red meat, chicken, pork, fish, eggs, dairy, highly processed foods, fried food, fast food, refined foods, like white bread and sugar, not many fruits and vegetables. So listen to these stats. 63% of what we eat, we being most Americans, 63% is highly processed and refined foods. Now we went over what highly processed foods are from last, last week. So you know, those are like created in a, in a lab. It's, it's additives, oil, sugars, it uh, colors, nothing that resembles a whole food. And refined foods are the white breads, white sugar, white rice. They have all the, the good stuff with the nutrients stripped. So there's, they take all the nutrients out. So 63% of what we eat are highly processed and refined foods. 25% of what we eat are animal-based foods. And only 12% of what we eat are plant-based foods. So the animal foods we know are foods that contain saturated fat and cholesterol. The highly processed foods are nothing healthy <laughs> at all. And so the 12% of what we eat are plant foods. So listen to this. Half of the plant foods we are eating are French fries. <laughs> right, I, know. I, was, I thought that was crazy when I heard that very specific <laughs> statistic. Well, because we, we eat so many French fries in this country. I, I was so shocked by that. We are eating so many French fries that they make up 6% of all the plant foods that we eat. That means if you're, if you're doing the math here along with me, that means only 6% of what we eat comes from whole plant foods, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, and seeds. How can this be Phil? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> not, not what we eat. All but... right. Let's Phil and I did a breakdown of what we eat. So what we did eat, I should say. So a typical day of eating for us back when, when we did not eat plant-based, we did this list. So here's, here's mine. Typical day that Judy ate before going plant-based breakfast, I would have a bagel. And I know I like the salt bagels, which were all like white, fluffy white bagels covered in salt, a bagel with butter. And I would melt a slice of cheese on it in the toaster oven. That's what I had typically when I ate breakfast. I was never a big breakfast eater, but I'd eat that on my car on the way to work. 
if I ate out on the weekends, it would be like egg white omelets, um, hash browns, buttered toast. I always like getting the turkey breakfast sausage, turkey bacon. Um, lunch, I'd have like a salad with chicken, eggs, cheese, probably some oily dressing that I loved, like ranch or Caesar. Or a chicken sandwich and a white bun with mayo, baked chips, turkey sandwiches with light mayo. And then dinner, I would always have either chicken, fish, some kind of pasta, salads, veggies, really anything. I didn't eat a lot of red meat ever or pork. I did when I was a kid, but I'm talking like most recently before I went plant-based because I thought that was healthy. Like the Mediterranean diet, chicken, fish, salads, cheese. So I would eat, let's see. So, I mean, on a typical, and again, and again, typical day, it's hard to say. I mean, obviously every day was different, but I did have a lot of bagels with cream cheese. I'd even make like bagels with cheese and ham, or I'd even have like turkey sandwich, you know, even for breakfast and things like that. Occasionally I'd have eggs and um, I did have cereal, uh, you know, having young kids, there was always cereal in the house. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, a bowl of cinnamon toast crunch or, you know, whatever was here. I'd be like, oh, that sounds Yum. good. Big thing of milk. Uh, If I was going out to eat, like if it was at a diner or something, like I would always have like the mixed plate, eggs over easy, bacon, hash browns, toast and butter or pancakes, uh, you know, biscuits and gravy sometimes with sausage on the side, you know, whatever. Obviously, the diner eating is going to be a little different than uh, at my house. Lunch, I'm, I'm more of a sandwich guy, but it was always, you know, meat, Uh, a mix of, you know, ham, turkey, salami, you know, things like that. Uh, We would buy just various meats. We did end up buying a lot of turkey because, yeah, we thought that was healthier. So as we tried to eat a little healthier and more low calorie, uh, yeah, but I'd always have cheese. I'd always have mayonnaise. You know, it's always on a big thick slice of, you know, Italian white bread or French bread or, you know, something like that. Uh, burgers, fries, leftover pizza or leftover dinner stuff. I would make sandwiches out of things like that, meatloaf and breaded steak and things like that. Uh, I work working from home. There's a lot more options. I mean, over the years, the you know, previous to us doing this, uh, well, I was going in for about six years, but previous to that for 12 years, I was working at home and lunch was just kind of whatever I wanted to make, you know, I mean, I have access to everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, dinners, you know, there's always meat. I mean, we might have one night a week that we wouldn't eat meat uh, if we had pasta or something like that, but it was meatloaf, steak, breaded steak, you know, roasted, like those roasted chickens we would buy a lot from the store, um, burgers, uh, potatoes, you know, whatever it was. I did eat a lot of salads. I was never like a big, like ranch, uh, creamy guy, you know, big, heavy salad dressing. So it was a lot of vinegar and oil. Uh, I did like blue cheese, uh, not a lot, but occasionally I'd have blue cheese uh, dressing, on, you know, on salad and stuff. So we did eat vegetables with, uh, you know, with our meals, but typically dinner was always meat. Because even my wife would complain. She's like, you know, can we just take a break from the meat? There's like a lot of meat going on. And bread, bread like right when I got married, bread was a huge thing. Like she, she's like, do we have to have bread with every meal? Like you have bread every single meal. And it's like, I don't know, that was always the standard. You put bread on the table. We did have bread with every meal. There was, we were, I remember thinking that too, when I, when I would go and eat at friend's house, like, where's the bread? (laughs) Where's the bread? (laughs) I can't eat dinner without bread. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I, I never realized until my wife pointed it out after, uh, not even after we were married, before we were married, because, but whatever, any, any time we'd eat, there would be, you know, there'd be bread on the table. And that was just not how she grew up. It was very different. Well, so you can see even the two of us, how we ate. I mean, there was animal products and everything, lots of processed foods, lots of condiments like mayo and ketchup and all that stuff. So all these little things during the day that you're not really thinking about add up. And if, if anybody, if you guys listened to the last episode, that's what happened when I did that vegan challenge um, at work. I realized when you really start thinking about it, and paying attention, you realize how much you're eating how much of the stuff you're eating, whether it's highly processed, refined animal products, just be conscious of it. Like take notes and see, cause like you're, I was shocked. Cause you start, cause I, a lot of my friends say that to me, Oh, I don't eat much meat. Oh, I, I eat pretty healthy. But once you start really paying attention and you know that it's all adding up, it's kind of like, wow, I really do. I, I was shocked at what I ate back in sure. 2011. Um, so that, that's just what Phil and I ate. And I felt like for the most part, I thought I was being fairly healthy back then. I didn't think too much about it, but I I thought I was being fairly healthy. I wasn't eating a lot of red meat. I wasn't eating a lot of pork. 
you know, I watched the butter that I put on. I kind of watched it. I still edit it, but I watched it. So that was us. So for, for like, let's say most of the U S you know, it could be, there's a lot of eating in fast food restaurants. So like bacon, egg and cheese biscuits at a drive through sure. in the morning. I see that McDonald's line, man. Sometimes I'm out early and there's like a line down the street and I'm like, man, all these people are eating that for bre-. Like I would be saying, even when I ate bad, I was never a fan of like eating it like a McDonald's or a Burger King or whatever for breakfast is always yeah. just like horrible you know you'd eat you'd eat it once and be like I feel horrible for the rest of the day but it's like man all these people are like on their way to work like eating like right breakfast McMuffins or whatever they're called I don't even know what they're called but like Mm -hmm. and like how can you sit there all day after eating like that big horrible breakfast it just seemed crazy when I drive by those places and it's like man there's like a line down the street yeah it's just crazy and you know you think about that's how they're starting their day off it's like there's nothing new there's no nutrition in a bacon, egg and cheese biscuit. And in fact, it's harming your health from what, what I know now, what I believe it is, it's doing nothing for you. But like you said, there's a line down the street for that. Or Portillo's that I pass that all the time. I mean, literally there's at lunchtime, there's probably 30 cars, 40 cars in line the whole time. They just keep coming and coming and coming. I'm like, man, oh man. I mean, sometimes, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable how many people are in line for lunch. And it's like, how long do these people have for lunch anyway? Like, you know, they're 40 cars <laughs> deep, you know, like, geez. So start paying attention to those things. Start seeing where you see the lines and you'll see that our statistics make sense. 63% of what we're eating is highly processed and refined foods. 25% animal-based foods. That's it right there. People are lining up for this. And just start, start paying attention when you go to the airport, where the lines are. It's amazing. There's don't get me started on airport food. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's the healthy line? Because there isn't any. Not in Miami airport, there's not this. <laughs> there, nobody's lined up at the health at the plant-based. Oh, wait a minute. There is no plant-based snack shop. <gasps> not yet. Not until we get smarty plants in there. Um, just a couple other things, but think about Starbucks too. What are people getting there? I mean, I'm not saying I, I'm not poo-pooing Starbucks. I go to Starbucks sometimes. My daughter and I like to get one here and there. Uh, but a lot of people are getting highly sugared, like caramel frappuccino. I mean, they might as well be desserts, right? And then a blueberry muffin loaded with oil and sugar on the side. That's a snack. That's a late afternoon snack. It sounds delicious with all that whipped cream on top and <laughs> three days of calories. <laughs> right there. Think about all the calories right there. And you're just making a quick Starbucks run while you're running your errands and you're mm-hmm. eating a muffin. And that's how Americans are eating. So that's the problem. It's the food. The food is the primary cause of obesity, heart disease, and diabetes, which are now at epidemic levels. So, you know, the thing is though, you you can't really blame us because everywhere we turn, we are bombarded with this stuff. It's the advertising. I mean, sometimes it just, it's maddening when you don't want to be seeing this stuff because it's just, you know, that it's promoting disease and obesity. But think about the commercials, like pepperoni pizzas being pulled apart and sodas and burgers flying at you. And, you know, they make it look so good. Everything's sizzling and juicy. (laughs) Easy, extra (laughs) cheesy, triple cheesy. Like they keep compounding the cheesiness of things to make it better. Oh my gosh. No, the dairy, that's that's another thing. The dairy industry stepped in and said, how can we, how can we up the dairy in these pizza, in these pizzas? Oh, we'll stuff the crust with cheese. (laughs) (laughs) Not, Not enough. On top. That's true. It's that's that's it. It's just that's what they. Oh, if we stuff the chat, we can double the dairy in the pizza. But billboards and you know websites. Every time you open your browser, it's another ad for the stuff. I'm standing at the grocery in the um yeah the grocery line. Some grocery lines. There's those monitors now. If you're at the gas pump, you're watching this stuff. I know. I had a TV show <laughs> at the gas station. Yeah, and unfortunately, some of the worst foods for us are also the most inexpensive and the most convenient. So just think about how easy it is to pick up like an entire fast food meal in like a minute. (laughs) And it's like five bucks, you know, that's the draw. It's convenient, it's fast, now you're hungry. You're saying like the dollar menu, you know? So it's like, oh man, that's cheap and quick and easy. You know, great McDonald's or whoever's dollar, you know, dollar menu. It's funny. I just saw a, someone posted a photo and it was like McDonald's from like 1973 or something. It's had the menu, the whole menu, everything added up. 
I, I just calculated it all, was five dollars and twenty three cents. I said they could buy everything on the menu for five dollars. No. Oh, it was very basic. It was like single, you know, a hamburger, cheeseburger, French fries, you know, whatever. But yeah, hot coffee, hot cocoa, you know. Wow. I'm like, for five bucks, you can, you know, for less than one burger now, or I guess I don't even know what burgers are, but uh, you can buy that whole menu off the uh, thing. But like I'm saying, uh, yeah, they all have these like low price deals to make it super easy. My son still goes to fast food and that's what he does. He relies on, because now he's paying for his own stuff. I'm not supporting mm-hmm. his him eating at McDonald's or Burger King or wherever he's eating. Uh, but that's what he does. It's like, where's the cheapest place we can eat? And it's like, that's typically where it is, is at the Burger Kings and McDonald's. and right Yeah, now. those little jingles getting stuck in your head. We all know how those work. Uh, what, what's that? Five dollar, five dollar. What is that one? <laughs> Subways, five dollar foot long. Five dollar foot long. Exactly. Then you're humming that all day. It's like, oh, Subway sounds good. (laughs) Only five bucks. But uh, yeah, it's it's just all this stuff is contributing to some very scary things. Again, I'll just recite a few stats that I have here in front of me. One person dies of heart disease every sixty seconds. Obesity rates for children have doubled over the past thirty years. Think about that. Doubled kids and that's when all oh, this fast food came along and you know the highly processed food that when our grandparents were young they weren't eating sour patch kids and they weren't eating pringles what are those those are <laughs> highly processed foods that are made in the factory and designed for us to crave them and they're cheap we can buy them we can pick them up on anywhere we go any gas station any convenience store you're, you're waiting in line at the grocery store and it's all staring you right there in the face, Kit Kats, all that stuff. Well, and even in the gas station, you know, I'll see like, uh, you know, get a, you know, whatever it is, 32 ounce drink for a dollar nine or, you know, free refills or, you know, whatever it is, three candy bars for $3. And it's like, man, you're forcing people to triple up on maybe a snack they may have had. Hey, I'm going to get a Snickers but I can get three for another dollar, you know, or whatever, in a a massive soda to go along with it. It's like, Man. What about these like supersizing everything too? Right. You know, like now we're now we don't stop at one big soda. Now we supersize it. Is that what they call it or whatever? They all they all yeah. family size, they like double right. the portions. Right. And and, and they, I mean it's it's done very strategically because mm-hmm. it doesn't make sense to buy that middle. The middle priced one is never, you know, I was just watching something about this and I wish I, I jotted down some info, but it was like they always price that middle price too high or too close to the top value because then you never want the middle one so getting a regular size so it's either the small for a a bigger price and then you the middle price is something no one wants to pay because for an extra 50 cents you get the jumbo or you get the family size or you get the you know super size or you know whatever it is everyone always goes for the super size it doesn't make sense not to you know value wise not to yeah i mean I just noticed that the portions are just getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And so are we, (laughs) but seriously, like just bags of chips, even like everything just seems to be getting bigger. It went from the regular size to family size to party size. It's like, what's, (laughs) what's next? Neighborhood size. Like, I'm not sure where where you can go. Feed your neighborhood. These, these marketing meetings, you know, like are these advertising, like who's coming up with this stuff? They are. Yeah. That's what they do. They sit at tables coming up with this stuff. Yeah. And, and, and we're not trying to portray them as evil people. They're, you know, they're, it's a business. They're just trying to sell their product. And I do get that, but it, there just seems something about it. That's not right. That's why we have to be ahead of them. We have to know what they're doing. We have to think for ourselves. It's sad to me now because the food is so bad for you. There's no nutrition in it at all. Why can't it be healthy food? Why does it have to be all this junk? You know, all right. Well, and you think of, you think about it, something like um, a cigarette company. You're always like, "Oh, that's evil. They're peddling death and sickness and cancer. That's horrible. How you know how how can they be doing this? Is you know morally this thing? Same thing, right? Aren't aren't, aren't these big uh, processed that you know the Doritos company and the canning? Aren't they peddling the same stuff? Sickness and obesity yes. and heart problems and yes. but we're we're all fine with that. Everyone's okay. Oh, that's just a big company. That they just want to stay in business. They're just they just want to make some money. But aren't they just peddling death for the most part? Yes. And they <laughs> don't all. care because they are making money and they're not claiming to be peddling health. No. They're not right. claiming it. Right. It's up to right. us to decide what to eat. We have choices. They can peddle anything they want if it's legal. 
they can peddle it and we, we can decide and we could vote with our dollars. And if we're not buying it, they're not going to be in business. So let's get some healthy food in business for us. (laughs) And as I said, this stuff does add up. We don't just get sick overnight. You know, all this stuff does add up our lifestyle choices. So it's all up to you what you want to put in your body. If you want to smoke, if you want to eat butter, if you want to eat a hundred percent plant foods all day, that's your choice. That's a lifestyle choice. I do choose to eat some oil. Some people don't. I choose not to eat any animal products ever. Some people do. It does all add up and you may not think it does, but it does. What happens is we all know our immune systems are like constantly working for us. They're like cleaning our bodies. They're repairing our bodies for us. So your immune system has to be strong and robust and really, really working for you. And it is when we're little kids, when we're little kids, it's great. It's like cleaning us out. It's repairing our cells. It's making us healthy. You know, they find all the toxins, they break them down and they get rid of them before they have a chance to make us sick. Our organs and our arteries are clean and clear and working great. Well, then what happens? Lifestyle choices come around. You know, we might smoke, we might eat bacon every day, we might eat cheese, not exercise, then we gain weight. These are all the choices we're making. And as we get older, we continue continue to eat these animal products and, you know, those contain cholesterol and saturated fat. We continue to eat highly processed food that contains oil and additives and chemicals and sugar and things start to add up. Look around at people, you know, in their twenties, they probably are a lot thinner, right? 30s, maybe a little heavier, 40s, maybe some health problems, 50s. And yes, we do all age. We do all age. I'm not talking about age. I'm not talking about aging. I'm talking about sickness and obesity and health problems. We gain weight. We continue to eat all this stuff. We start to gain weight. Cholesterol starts to line our arteries. And then it becomes harder and harder for our immune systems to keep up with all the damage we're doing to our bodies. And what does that eventually lead to? chronic disease, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, and even cancer. But chronic diseases could be slowed down, stopped, and even reversed by eating a whole food plant-based diet. Heart disease and type two diabetes are completely preventable and reversible. So if you are listening to this and you have diabetes type two, get on our program, drop everything and try to follow our diet because you have the power to, to change all that. I'm not saying get off your medications. I'm not saying don't listen to your doctor. Just try this. You can reverse it. And we're going to do a whole show on diabetes and I'll explain everything that you can do and, and how it works and, and why you can reverse it. Well, it's great. I mean, with the 28 day, uh, 28 days is not a lot of time. You know, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, this, I'm just speaking from personal experience. It's like, okay, I can commit to 28 days, you know, and that, so that's what I chose to do. But just to see results within that 28 days, that's where it kind of affected me. And it's just like, holy cow, I did see, you know, Judy was right. My blood pressure did drop. Mm-hmm. I did lose weight. I do feel better. I feel like I can do more. With weight just comes, and I shouldn't say laziness, but almost like exhaustion. I don't feel like going to walk a mile. I'm, I'm heavy. It's hard. It, it sucks. My feet hurt. It does this. But as you drop the weight, it was like, wow, now I'm, I'm able to do more. I want to do more. I feel like I can do more. And it, and it kind of just kind of spiral, uh, not spirals, but it kind of continues from there. Like you, you, you are better, you feel better and you want to do more, you know? Yeah, I can relate because I've been doing my supernatural workouts. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm pushing my Oculus. I, I love this thing. I, I'm just not a workout person. You guys have heard me say this. I just don't like it, but I love this and it's getting me to work out. And I always knew for a long, long time, I need to exercise more to be healthier. I need it, but I couldn't find anything that I like doing. Well, I found this supernatural. No, they're not a sponsor. I have nothing to do with us. Yeah. Yet. Yet, yet. But I am smashing balloons and jumping all over the living room. And I, I sweat. I'm not a sweater. I work up a sweat every time. And it's like 20 minutes, half hour. And anyway, since I've been doing it for the last month, I feel stronger. It's like my arms feel stronger. I feel, I don't know. I just feel more sturdy. I don't know what it is. I just feel like I can move better. Maybe I'm more limber. I don't know. But you're right. Now I'm more excited to do more. Now I'm going up to the next level of <laughs> supernatural. You know, it's so it's like the more you feel better, 
you do better. You know, you, you want to right. push yourself even further. So yeah, I'm excited about my workouts, but right. So when you start to lose the weight, you're like, Hey, now I can really walk. Now I could walk faster. I remember you started, you almost started jogging. Didn't you? For a while. Well, yeah, I, was, I was walking. I mean, I was walking a lot. I started out just easy, you know, I'm going to do a mile. Then it was just like, oh, I could do a mile and a half. And then it was more and more. And then as I got up to, again, I was doing like seven miles at one point. But then I was like, all right, well, let me try and jog portions of a percentage of that mile. So it's like, all right, in the next mile, I'm going to run for a minute or jog for a minute, and then I'll walk for a minute. And then in this mile, it's like, I'll run for two minutes, and then I'll walk for two minutes. So, I was, And again, I'm just mixing it up. Like right when I started walking or whatever, I, there's no way I can jog. You know, jogging was out of the question. But yeah, I, I don't love running. I was, not, I was never a runner or a jogger. I don't even really care for jogging. I just figured I want to get my heart. I'm not a walker either. My wife will walk and I'm usually like three steps behind her. I'm like, slow down. We're walking here. We're not jogging. What did you say? You're not a what? A like a walker, like half jog, half walk, where you're walking. Walker. <laughs> I never heard it's of like, that. It's just like, let's walk, especially if we're talking. Like, I'm out of breath. I'm trying to talk. I'm trying to walk. Like, I can't do all that stuff. It's like, we're either going to walk gingerly and not talk, or we're going to walk slower and have a conversation here. I can, I can walk fast myself and not talk. <laughs> But she's always like three steps ahead of me. It's like, slow down if we're going to be talking. She's talking and walking and too much. It's too much. <laughs> she's pushing you to step it up a notch. That, that's, that's the difference. She, she pushes herself more than I push myself. I'm going for distance. She's going for space. <laughs> she's getting that heart, heart rate up. <laughs> she's in for quality. I'm in for quantity. But no, I mean, it's, you know, I, I just, I was just never a big, uh, you know, jogger. But yeah, I, I was trying to kind of mix it up to get my heart rate up a little bit. So I just want to get this, this fact across to everybody that you can reverse the damage that's already been done. We all have damage that we've done to ourselves on our insides and we can reverse it. We can reverse heart disease, diabetes, some autoimmune disorders. And actually when I took my plant-based nutrition class, when I got certified in plant-based nutrition, it was E. Cornell, the T. Colin Campbell nutrition studies class. They showed scientific data that proving this to be true. Like I actually saw MRI scans. They showed the clogged arteries actually opening up and working again, all by the change in their diet. So it's pretty unbelievable. Not only that, also eating a plant-based diet lowers the risk of cancer, kidney disease, rheumatoid arthritis, diverticulitis, Alzheimer's, which there's big studies being done on Alzheimer's, multiple sclerosis, gallstones, and also people who eat a plant-based diet get over colds and viruses much quicker. People see huge improvements with acne, asthma, acid reflux, lupus, osteoporosis, IBS, and even sleep apnea. For some people, these things even disappear completely, which is pretty amazing. Look at COVID and who's getting hit the hardest. People with underlying conditions like obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease. These are the people who are struggling with this. Every meal we eat, we eat to feed or fight disease to some extent. Let that sink in. Every meal we eat, we eat to feed or to fight disease. It's true. So do you want to feed your body the right stuff? Do you want to fight disease or do you want to feed disease? I do think about that when I'm eating. I just love that. I love that statement because it's really true. Like I said, things add up over the years. You really have to think about it. Hey everyone, it's Phil. I just wanted to take a quick break in the discussion to remind everyone that Smarty Plants has two great meal plans to offer. The first is our 28-day kickstart, which is for people who are curious about a plant-based diet but really don't know where to begin. It's also for people who have health or weight issues and need some help getting healthy. Our program includes 28 days of carefully planned recipes that are simple to make and super tasty. Things like Caesar salad, nachos, and pizza. It also includes meal prep instructions, a grocery list, and daily lessons on things like stocking a plant-based kitchen, weight loss, and navigating social situations. You'll come out of it a plant-based rock star. If this sounds good to you, you should become one of our Kickstarters. Our second program is our weekly meal plan. This is for people who have the plant-based basics down, but they want tested and trusted delicious recipes each week. Our members receive at least three new recipes each week created by our very own Smarty Plants team. Things like pesto lasagna, crunch wraps, French onion, grilled cheese, sauces, mains, sides, desserts, and more. Our meal planners have access to our full recipe database. Our meal planner where they can customize their meals each week and create a grocery list. 
meal prep instructions, and great support, of course. Stop downloading random recipes from strangers on the internet and check out our tested and delicious recipes. If this sounds good to you, let us do the heavy lifting for you and become one of our weekly meal planners. For more info, check out our website, smartyplants.org, and use the discount code PODCAST2022. That's P-O-D-C-A-S-T-2022. You'll receive 50% off our 28-day kickstart or 50% off our weekly meal plan for up to three months. Now back to the show. The other thing is um, genes. You know, people think, well, it's in my genes. I'm going to get it. I always thought about that too. Like I said, heart disease runs in our family. We always think it, that the heart disease is the thing that runs in our family because many of our family members are getting this stuff. So we start to think that, well, you know, grandpa had it, dad had it, just a matter of time before I get it, I'm going to get it because it runs in our family. Like we absolutely have no control over this, but that isn't true. Our genes are not our destiny. Yes, our genes may put us at risk for certain things for sure, but it's really only a 5% role in our health. 5%. That's it. That is not much if you think about it. No, it's 95% control. Yeah. And I do this in the kickstart. It's like if you put 95 gumballs in a bucket and you have five red gumballs out of 95 blue ones, what's the chances you're going to pull out a red one? Not much. (laughs) You're going to be eating a lot of blue gumballs. (laughs) No, don't eat any blue gumballs. (laughs) They make your lips blue. (gasps) So there's a really good chance these genes will never affect your health if your lifestyle choices like eating a plant-based diet support this. And many people don't realize that. These health problems that they have are not due to genetics. It's because we eat the same way that, like I said, like our dad ate, like our grandpa ate. So grandpa got heart disease, dad gets it, I get it because we're all eating the same food. We ate Italian sausage. We ate Italian sausage in our Sunday gravy, sausage and peppers. My mom was always frying meatballs on Sunday morning. We'd have two or three meatballs before dinner. <laughs> before dinner, right? Like for, right after breakfast. Or before. That was a breakfast snack. <laughs> Those were delicious. <laughs> Those were delicious. Well, we're not saying that it, these animal <laughs> products aren't delicious. They are. A lot of cheese. We had a lot of cheese. Cheese on everything. I mean, cheese. I put I put Romano cheese on almost everything I ate. I gotta say, when I'm looking back, sandwiches, soup, pizza, salad. I mean, any, everything. Any, yeah, mm-hmm. Romano cheese on it. Yeah, we did. We just put it on everything. Lots of animal products, lots of cheese, meats, olive oil. You know, so we're all eating this food. So we're all going to get the same types of diseases. It's not our genes. I only, we only have the 5% of the same genes in our systems and our bodies. So it's all this food we're eating. We're eating all the same foods. It was just really a light bulb moment for me when I realized that because I was one of them. Oh, I'm probably going to have a heart attack someday. I mean, just what happens in our family. Everywhere you look, I see overweight people, obese people, you know, some of them are even having trouble walking. They have multiple health problems. They're taking multiple medications, which each of these medications have side effects. And then you're on that downward spiral. It's like, I'm trying to balance everything. I'm taking my pills for this, but it's causing that. And then I, you know, I've seen this happen with close family members. It's like they're taking two, three, four pills. <laughs> more than that. More than, a lot more than that. More than that. They're taking one for their blood thinner, one for their diabetes, one for their heart disease, one for their cholesterol, keeping their bones strong. <laughs> right. It's just like, and then all these things are doing other, creating other side effects that they have to take pills for. Oh my gosh. Again, I'm not poo-pooing Western medicine and pills, but why be on these things if you don't have to be? I'm just not interested in patching things up with pills or surgery and like never fixing their actual problem. That's what the drug companies want. They don't want you dead. They don't want you healthy. They want you right in the middle, sick and buying their pills and living as long as possible. So you benefit them. Yeah, and people, you know, and, and you unfortunately get into that situation where you are, you're paying high prices for medication and you're complaining about it, uh, yet don't want to really do anything to stop it from happening. You know, like you have the control of changing some of that, yet you don't. And then you're just complaining because you have to take so many pills. You still don't really feel that well. And uh, you know, you're spending money to do it, you know, to not feel well. Yeah. I I don't want to make them sound evil like this. I know this, again, this is a business, 
but our health is not their main concern. They're pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> They're in the pill business. Look at all the commercials again with these commercials. I'm like, who is their target market when you watch the news? I mean, it's all of these drug companies pushing these pills. It's like, I'll never have a heart attack again because I'm on this pill. You know, I, I'll, my diabetes is in, under control with this pill. It's just so shocking to me. I, sometimes I do. I yell at the screen and I'm like, how about a plant-based diet, people? <laughs> how about no pills? If you're okay with popping a cholesterol pill every day and, you know, you want to stick to eating what you eat and you feel like you're controlling it that way, that is your choice. Personally, I don't want to be on cholesterol medication. I don't want to be on any pills that I don't have to be on. Now, if I have to be on pills for some something, I'll take them. If I really have to and I can't, I feel like I can't control it with my diet, of course I'm going to take them. Of course I will. But if I don't have to be, I don't want the pills. I don't want the side effects. I don't want the expense. I don't want to have to remember to take my pills every day. That's interesting. I had just, um, I had just made a post in one of the Facebook groups. It's called uh, Plant Based Over 50. Mm -hmm. um, so I was just interested. And, I, and that was the post. It said, hey, how many people are not on any medication right now? And I must have gotten 500 and some responses from people in this group just saying, and again, not everyone's on zero medication. There were people that have asthma or some, something else. Uh, you know, there was a couple of uh, underlying situations that had nothing to do with diet. Uh, but in the end, it was like, wow, I didn't even realize like I would get that kind of response. Uh, I mean, I, again, I know it's a plant-based group and I, I assume a lot of people aren't, uh, but it was very good to kind of see that. Just yeah. Hear saying like zero medication i'm you know 75 right now i haven't had medication in my in my entire life some people don't even take aspirin and that kind of thing uh, but in the end it was like i didn't see any blood pressure medications i didn't wow. see any pills I, so it was really great to kind of see that just people weighing just random people weighing in i wasn't taking a survey or anything you know clinical or anything i just asked the question and thought, yeah it was great it was great to see can we get them on the podcast <laughs> I want to hear their stories. Well, yes, couple, I want to talk to these people. Yeah, a couple of people went into detail just saying like, hey, I started this when I was, you know, in my 40s and I lost this weight. I'm off of all my That's medications. That's what I want to hear. Yeah. yeah, so it was good to kind of see those people too, where it was, I was taking medication and now I'm not anymore because that's how I feel like I am, or I was about to, and I, and I didn't, you know, both of those scenarios unfolded for me where I was taking something I'm not, and I never went on medication that they told me I was going to have to, so. That is great to see. I love it. And, you know, here's the thing. We're not just talking about older people who are getting sick now and getting, you know, to developing some of these diseases and problems. You young and healthy people listening to this, you need to think about this stuff too. I mean, I learned this in my class that autopsies is, that are done on teens, like if they were, you know, unfortunately killed in car crashes, um, they have had, they have found heart disease started already. They say after age 11, it starts. So that's, you know, teenagers. If you are young and healthy and you're eating the standard American diet, you are on a path to eventually becoming sick and unhealthy. It's true if you don't change it up. So we're trying to get to the young teenagers too. You know, like Aiden, my nephew. Yeah, I mean, I tell my son all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. he's thin, and not not that that's going to matter. But uh, in the end, yeah, just the volume of junk food that he eats. And, and again, he's trying to eat healthier now, so I'm trying to be proactive and helping him out with that. Uh, but man, it's a lot of like he's you know he's making like you know I'm going to make cheese sticks with crushed up um, Cheetos. Yeah, you know, I'm going to roll the cheese you know the cheese stick in egg and then dunk it in a Cheetos. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm like, oh my God, what are you eating? He's like, oh, these are so good. It's just like, oh my God, that's the <laughs> worst thing you could ever possibly eat. Oh. But just everything. He eats a lot of like, you know, pre-made meals, you know, he, uh, and gnocchi, like a, a gnocchi alfredo from Trader Joe's, yep. or, you know, like that kind of stuff where it's like, it's got these big blocks of like frozen cheese and then you throw it in the microwave and you mix it up. Even that, he crushes flaming hot Cheetos on the top of that on Yaki Alfredo. Jeez, man, you're just add, making it so much worse for you. It's, I mean, it's already horrible, but. Oh but, my Lord. But at least now he's starting to work out. Or he's, starting, he's already starting to work out. He's trying to eat kind of healthier things. I gotta say one thing that he's never done, which I'm grateful for, which is seemingly very minor in the grand scheme of things, is the soda. He drinks zero soda. He's never drank cold. Oh, good. Any kind of pop or anything. He drinks water like crazy, which is great. But right. that's his only saving grace to anything is, you know, he does drink a high volume of water, which is good. 
Yeah, sodas another one. Not only are we eating terribly every day, we're drinking sodas on top of all of it. All that sugar. I mean, I know people that drink a liter of soda a day. Like, I mean, drink a mass quantity of soda every day. Oh, I love soda. I love soda. You know, like drinking can after. Can you imagine can after can after drinking soda? So again, I don't want to, you know, berate people that are drinking soda out there. But it's just not good for you. It's so much sugar in those things. And man, oh man, like some people, friends of mine, you know, drink the big gulps. They're two liter bottles. Uh, I used to work with this guy. I mean, he would literally have, there was a, it was a cup. A 64 ounce cup. It was a massive, like obviously oh. oversized mug. He would fill it to the top in the morning. And I'm like, Andy, man, do you drink that whole thing all day? He's like, Oh, I love it. I love it. He's like, it's diet soda though. It's not all that sugar. Oh. Like, that's that's probably worse than the sugar. Like, God knows what that stuff is. All that poison in there, man. Every single day, 64 ounces of so diet soda. Oh. Like, ooh, it's just such an opportunity to drink water and nourish your body and cleanse right. your body. And people are dousing it with this stuff that who knows what's in it? Who knows what that's doing to your insides? I know, I know. Because it it's sweet and you get addicted to that sugar and it quenches your thirst, I guess. They think it's refreshing. But get on a get on, get yourself hooked on water. Then you will never want that so- soda. It's right. adding all those calories, and it's just adding on pounds and things we don't need. So we want to help people get healthy and stay healthy, so you can prevent any problems from popping up in the first place, and also reverse problems that diet and lifestyle have created for all of us. So. Let's all start to heal from the inside out. How does that sound? Yeah. <laughs> I'm bored. Okay. I think that's enough for today. Um, how about we end this with a Chinese proverb? You want to read it, Phil? <laughs> sure. If you want to know your past, look into your present conditions. If you want to know your future, look into your present actions. Yeah, that really, really hit home for me. Think about it. If you look at yourself now, it's because of what you've done in the past. If you look into the future, it's what you're doing today. Right. Yeah. So think about that, mister. (laughs) Don't dwell on your past. (laughs) Don't dwell on your past. (laughs) Well, the one that the one that we put in the kickstart that I found that always hits for me, that it goes, uh, if you don't make time for your wellness, you'll be forced to make time for your illness which is huge. That one really struck me because that's what you see all the time is people yeah. trying to control their, their illness rather than working on their well, you know, wellness. And it kind of ties into that. What you're doing right now is going to affect the future. Yeah, so right, why not do things that are going to make you well in the future rather than make you ill in the future? So we hope that this episode brought some insight into why we are all becoming obese, getting all these chronic diseases, and it is the food. So let's all be mindful of that. Start noticing when you're out and about what food's being consumed and why we're having this problem. Start changing your own diet, adding more plants, taking out some of this stuff. Like Phil said, see how you feel, you know, start, change it up. You need help? Stop by Smarty Plants. We got the plan to get you started, kick you off. 28 days and all it takes, 28 days, man. In two weeks, you'll start noticing changes too. Sure weeks your blood yeah. pressure will will start to come into normal range two weeks i mean it's just crazy you don't um, believe it try it <laughs> see what happens give it a try we just want you to try it because we want we want you to see for yourself and people that you know who need help send them our way you know let them let them listen to the podcast bring them into our private facebook group get them in, get them thinking about this stuff i just want to get this on their radar because we are trying to reach as many people as we can but you know it's not as easy as you think (laughs) we're we're trying to get out there but we kind of need help finding people so we want to help people spread the word spread the word so don't forget to follow us on social media we're on facebook we had a great group on facebook it's just called smartmartyplants.org you can do a search in the groups um we're also on twitter we're on instagram you can follow us on any of those just doing a search for smarty plants and don't forget to like and subscribe or follow our podcast. We'll have some great shows coming up uh, every week. We drop a new show. So don't forget to subscribe and follow. Thanks for listening, everybody. We hope you enjoyed it. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.